myself scientist. Now, if you're wondering where I've been for the last few months, I've actually been really busy getting married during a global pandemic and getting a puppy. Anyway, I'm back now and I'm really excited to share this new video with you that's all about a completely new test that we've got in our lab that is literally saving lives and it comes under the field of pharmacogenomics. So what is pharmacogenomics? Well, pharmaco comes from the word pharmacology, which is the science of how drugs work. So you've probably heard of this in terms of the pharmacy or a pharmacist. And genomics, as I'm sure you know by now, is the study of the human genome. So to do with all the genes in our body. So pharmacogenomics is basically using genomic information, so information from our genes, to predict how a patient might respond to a particular drug. Now, this test came about because a number of patients with cancer were given a certain type of chemotherapy called 5-FU or fluorouracil. Now, most of the patients who had this type of chemo were fine and tolerated it, but a small number of patients, about two to 8%, experienced severe side effects, such as diarrhea, vomiting, heart problems, brain problems such as swelling of the brain or even death. So these cancer patients were given this type of chemotherapy to make them better and actually it ended up doing more harm. It soon came to light that the reason why these patients were experiencing severe side effects was because they had a small change or mutation in their DPYD gene. Now this stands for dihydropyrimidine dehydrogenase. So I'll stick to calling it DPYD for the rest of the video. Now we all have the DPYD gene and its role in the body is to make the DPD enzyme. Now when someone is given 5-FU chemotherapy, this enzyme is used to break down the drug into different chemicals that can be expelled from the body. Now, if your DPYD gene is not working properly, you can't make the DPD enzyme. So if you're given this 5-FU chemotherapy, then you can't break it down safely. So it builds up in the body and causes toxic effects. Now, if you think back to my previous videos, you'll remember that we have two copies of every single gene. And that's exactly the same for the DPYD gene. Now, if both your copies are working fine and they don't have one of these mutations, then you can produce the DPD enzyme and you can break down the drug so it's safe for you to have this type of chemo. If one copy is working fine, but the other one has got a mutation, then you can have the chemo, but you must have it at a much lower dose. If both copies are not working, so they've both got a mutation, then you can't produce the DPD enzyme, so you can't break down the drug at all, so you cannot have this type of chemo and a different treatment plan must be made. So how do we test for it? Well, why don't you come with me to the lab and I'm gonna show you each stage of the process. sample arrives in the lab in this box here and it's a blood sample with a referral card so let's just say for example that this is a male patient and we'll call him patient X and he is waiting to start chemotherapy that contains 5-FU so his clinician has sent a blood sample in to check his DPYD gene so the sample is brought down to the lab stamped with the date and then booked on to our computer system and given a unique number. So this blood sample then gets loaded onto this big machine here, the Kevagen, and we end up with a DNA sample like this. 
and if you want to know more about DNA extraction and how it actually works then please look back at my previous video. The DNA sample is then put onto the drop sense machine in order to measure the quantity and quality of DNA. So this DNA now contains all of the genes from patient X, but we're only interested in the DPYD gene and that's all he's consented for, so that's all we're allowed to test. So we do PCR to amplify up and make lots of copies of the DPYD gene specifically. So I could do an entire episode on PCR, but for now, let's just think of it like this. For this type of PCR, we use two different tubes, tube A and tube B. We add patient X's DNA to both tubes. And then to tube A, we add different chemicals to amplify up the mutations in the DPYD gene. To tube B, we add different chemicals to amplify up the normal copies of the DPYD gene. This is then left and run on a PCR block overnight. So normally we would set this up with lots of different patients and include positive and negative controls to ensure the test is working correctly. But we're just showing you what it would be like for one patient as an example. The next morning, the sample is transferred onto a plate and loaded onto the gene scanner, which works by capillary electrophoresis. You might have heard of gel electrophoresis before, which separates out DNA fragments according to their size. Well, this does the exact same thing, but instead of using a gel, we use this big machine here and capillaries to separate out fragments of DNA according to their size. And it produces an electrophorogram for us that we can use for analysis. The electrophorograms now get transferred from the gene scanner to our computers for analysis. So, in tube A, this amplified up the mutations, and in tube B, this amplified up the normal copies of the gene. So, as you can see here, this patient has got one blue peak, so he has got this mutation. He does not have a corresponding green peak, so he has got no normal copy of the gene. So, both copies have got the mutation, therefore, he has not got a functioning copy of the DPYD gene. He therefore can't produce the DPD enzyme, he can't break down 5-FU, therefore he should not be given this type of chemo. So what I'll do at this point is make a phone call to the clinician to explain that patient X has got a change in his DPYD gene on both copies and therefore he shouldn't receive this type of chemo. We'll also write a report and send that out later today for the patient's records and all of this from the sample arriving in the lab to the report being distributed is done in five days because it's an urgent test as these patients are awaiting urgent cancer treatment. Without this test patient X would have been given chemotherapy containing 5-FU he'd have suffered serious side effects and probably died. Now that we know he's got a change in his DPYD gene, he can be given a different type of treatment. So this just shows how important this test is and it is quite literally saving lives. It's now compulsory for anyone who's going to be having chemo containing 5-FU to have this genetic test beforehand. When we think of new developments in science, we often talk about the last five, maybe 10 years. Now this test has literally been implemented in the last couple of months. And in that time, we've tested hundreds of patients and in many cases prevented serious harm. Hopefully you've learned something new from this video and understood more about the importance of genomic testing in the NHS. If you've liked the video, then please do share it with your friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as The Scout Scientist. Thanks for watching. See you soon.